Boss Rush Video Game Book Club is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our family of podcasts, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush media to see which tier is right for you. Thanks for your continued support. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Video Game Book Club here on the Boss Rush Network. I am your host, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. Hey, here to talk about my most beloved franchise and a pretty awesome game. Ah, Halo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Precisely. Just. Uh, beautiful singing voice we're gonna get copyright strike oh so close that is none other than pk power pat klein hello Hi, i pat. do i'm ready to talk about halo are you maybe 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 it'll be a patreon vote who knows <laughs> halo combat evolved coming soon maybe probably not mm-hmm. uh also joining us is is the wonderful the lovely one of the best YouTubers on the planet, none other than Blocks Game Reviews. Uh, no, that's that's not true. But it is. Just listen to that voice, everybody. Mm-hmm. Listen I, to the voice. I, I think it's very very sexy myself, but mm-hmm. but um, we all do. That's, it's hot. Wow. Mm. Thank that's, you. that's why we had to do three episodes before you came on because we could we 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 couldn't let we couldn't just lead off with the voice of, of block, right? We had to, I should be doing ASMR videos now. (laughs) Yeah, do it. No more, no more gaming, just ASMR. Yep. Blocks, ASMR reviews in ASMR. Imagine reviewing ASMR things. The way she crinkles the paper Mm. is just so relaxing and puts me to sleep. This will be our new revenue stream, (laughs) Corey. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Block, you get thirty five percent. Oh, of what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of zero. That that's exciting. Yeah, I, like that. I know. I know. I know. Uh, so you guys, if you clicked on this, you probably already saw the thumbnail or you read the title. But if you stumbled across this on accident, we are doing a three part book club on. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. This is part one. We are we are going to kind of go through, really go through the opening, kind of talk about the story. We're not gonna, we're say we're going to do a whole episode on dungeons, which will be the, which will be next month. So uh, don't worry, we're not going to spoil any of the dungeons. We might talk about which ones we've done and if we like them or not, but that'll be next. That'll be the next episode. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna. I, I thought maybe we could get by with two, but this game is so big. This game is so massive. There's mm. so many things to find that we're gonna we're gonna need three. We're gonna need three of these boys, these bad boys. So, uh, yeah. So we're gonna kind of talk about our initial impressions right now, at this moment. Stephanie, I'm starting with you. Tears of the Kingdom. How are you feeling? Much better than I did before. Um, I know this when you say before. Wait, isn't this part one? Well, I did get to talk about my initial impressions when I was on Nintendo Pow Block, um, the episode where I was laughing three minutes straight because Corey sent me videos of Koroks being crucified. <laughs> um, That's the best part of the game. <laughs> um, at that time, I I don't even know what percentage of the game I was in, but I was still very early in, and I was I liked one percent. <laughs> yeah, one percent. I now I'm at two percent. Woo! I liked it, but I was getting frustrated at my own maybe lack of creativity and not getting used to certain controls and stuff like that. But now that I've gone further into it and done more than one temple, I am oh, I'm just keep on getting impressed and and more and more impressed. Like my my level of of enthusiasm, excitement, and love for the game is getting higher. So it's the gift that keeps on giving, and I'm I'm just loving it. I love the kind of ally system, which maybe we won't necessarily go into because they're tied in with the temples. Like once you defeat a temple, 
dot, mm-hmm. dot, dot. But the ally system is fun. The sky islands are great. Anytime I see a chunk of rock falling from the sky, I immediately drop what I'm doing just to go ride it back up. <laughs> like, And the underground I'm starting to explore too. And um, man, it's a lot. Yeah. There, there is a lot to this game. Uh, if you are, if you are unaware, there is obviously the the main map of Hyrule, which they've changed a lot. I mean, the 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 geography and everything is still the same, right? The general layout is still the same, but a lot of the geography they've messed with. They've added caves and caverns, and new shrines and all that stuff. And then obviously the Sky Islands, we've seen a lot in the trailers and the in the gameplay video uh, before it was released and all that kind of stuff. But then there's, then there's the depths, which is literally just a whole map underground <laughs> underground. That's it's just pitch like black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's pitch black. You definitely need the, the bulb, the, the bright bulb things, the bloom, uh, fl- the something, the bloom, bloom, bright, bloom, bright bloom, bloom, something, bright. Something someone, like yeah. <laughs> help a glowy uh, plant uh, yeah it's it, you but, throw it and it sprouts immediately which is actually uh you know part of <laughs> the entrance to uh to the to one of the temples is is in the depths and it's kind of cool how you have to get there but uh like i said we're not going to kind of cut oh. that now but uh but yeah block how are you feeling about it Oh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's I'm moving through it slower than I would want to for for both kind of an awe of everything and try not to get sidetracked, but, you know, personal reasons as well, because I'm an adult with responsibilities, yeah. sadly, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, you know, but I, I, I'm a little I don't want to say disappointed with the Sky Islands, but they don't impress me as much as the depths. I really and I feel more excited going down into the dark. And, you know, I think a lot of it is I really like horror games and, and horror atmosphere. So that that appeals to me. Um, you know, it's kind of like the upside down from from Stranger Things. I feel like because it's just, it takes up the whole, uh, the world. It's not the same world, um, but it's just so vast and you have those, like, I guess the pollen or whatever it is floating around and it's real hazy, even when, when it's bright, but the vast majority of it is, is pitch dark and you have these, these glowing enemies that are consumed with, with this this corruption and the know, gloom yeah that gloom and 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 i really love like the the challenge of like getting hit and mm-hmm. it's sealing away your health so you can't easily heal um without really preparing um you know it's almost like a built-in hard mode or a hard area yeah um at first you know, i hated that but come on like they the game gives us so much uh, food that we can craft that it's actually no big deal. Like there's oh yeah, food. there's there's food sunflowers everywhere. or whatever. Yeah, sun yeah. Lines. The sun Those, lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the um, you know, and, and it reminds me also uh, of Elden Ring when you go into the the I don't want to say the depths, um, but underground there because it's that same kind of atmosphere. It's much darker. You also have that kind of like pollen stuff there. Um, there's a, there's a lot of like giant mushrooms and giant plants mm. and um, that unique flora and fauna that you just don't find anywhere else. And there's that 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 um, that sense that there's this old civilization, this old world that has just been buried and something new built on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and and what I'm really impressed with with Tears of the Kingdom is that you, the only game that I can think of that has it in three layers of that that you have the surface world, the world underground, but then you also have the most ancient world up in the sky, and so you're just exploring all facets of this this mm-hmm. uh, franchise's history in a way, um, this history of Hyrule by going as far 
back as as you know uh, millennia um and, and so it's just I, that's that's what i'm really getting into right now is just um kind of diving in every which way i can um as a as a as a stumble upon it yeah it's uh i'm just kind of like i'm forcing myself to <laughs> not be distracted by so many things because it's so hard to do yeah. i know uh especially because i wanted to at least get to a point that we could uh talk about some of the things and so like every time i see a shrine i mark it and i mm-hmm. go back i go back to it when i have time but like the one thing I kind of uh, actually, you know what, Pat, I'm going to I'm going to ask you about your initial impressions first, because there's something I do want to talk about uh, once we get through our kind of thoughts. So, Pat, what, mm-hmm. what are your what are your initial thoughts on this? Well, I uh, I really do enjoy this game. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat with Black, where the Sky Islands are not impressing me as much as I thought they were supposed to. Uh, but that's mostly because I've done a lot of exploring and a lot of those islands are cookie cutter Mm. like you'll see the same x-shape island that has this like catapult that's in the middle uh there's another type of island that has like a small cave system inside that usually hides a shrine crystal like it a lot of the islands just feel the same so it kind of doesn't make me want to explore them as much question Um, about the sky islands because you mentioned that do you mm-hmm. still feel like it's a bit more fleshed out than the Sky Islands and Skyward Sword, at least? Wow, I said Sky a lot. <laughs> sky um, and chili. <laughs> ah, gross. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a little more to do in the Sky Islands and Tears of the Kingdom versus the Sky Lofts. Uh, but it's still like, I'm not taking that much of an effort to go out and trying to get onto these sky islands hmm. except for the one that i mentioned that was in the thundercloud because that looked pretty damn cool and we know how that turned out well it kind of reminds me <laughs> of how mario galaxy is in a way in a way in that you have all of these little small islands part of a, a larger structure on, on some of those worlds And some of those can be, you know, you you finish in in just about a minute or so, and then you jump on to the next one. But they're usually connected to something much larger. And and I like that, but it doesn't grab me as as much, like you said. Mm -hmm. The Depths is pretty cool. Uh, It is also very empty down there as well in terms of, like, actually finding things. But the things you do find are pretty awesome. I found a pair of pants that glow in the dark. Mm-hmm. And they're my favorite pants to wear in the game now. You can take those clubbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're called the minor pants. I also found uh, a fierce deity mask, which ups my attack. And uh, also a robe that helps fight corruption. What? Or like protects you against corruption. I mm-hmm. need to find that. I found the robe. I have the miners shirt the so top. you have a glow in the dark shirt yeah it is a top it's 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 almost looks like bondage because it's a whole bunch of straps <laughs> which is weird but there's like glowing balls all over it so it kind of looks like a christmas tree or something um but i like it. it it glows and then i found a lot of um two pieces of the um the the hero of times outfit that's right. I did find a Hero of Time mask. Is no the tunic. I found the Hero mm-hmm. of Time tunic. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like the only purpose I've seen going down is to get Zonite to help improve That's your energy a big part. source. Yeah, I um, still have yet to like process them to do the battery. Like I have a ton of Zonite or whatever, and now mm-hmm. I'm like, I I need more battery. Like it's now become very apparent that I, my battery power is not enough. I need to upgrade. And I'm like, I only have one still because I haven't found another seller or or another converter of it yet. Uh, There's one just, I believe to the North, like literally to the North of lookout town Mm -hmm. on top Mm -hmm. of a ruin. No, I need to go there. Mm Mm-hmm. I might have, I must have missed that one. I found I know of the one in the sky on that starting one. 
Yeah. I go back there every now and then. I, uh, so just to kind of give my initial impressions real quick, I, I think, um, I first, I was like, for some reason I knew, I knew what we were going into, right? It's a sequel to breath of the wild. There's new powers. I thought I was ready for it, but my Mm -hmm. initial thought was like, I was actually pretty overwhelmed with the amount of Mm -hmm. things like the new things mixed with the new shrines mixed with like, just exploring and the building aspect is incredibly intimidating for someone who doesn't really care for the the <laughs> building kind of games, right? Like, uh, I know a lot of people are <laughs> jokingly comparing this to Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, but like, mm. it actually kind of functions a little bit in a similar way. Uh, so, as somebody who actually liked that game, I kind of was like, after I built a few things, I was kind of like, okay. I feel okay building things, but uh, when you when you get to the when you get to Hyrule uh, proper, it actually feels pretty linear, and is actually I feel like it's it's they did a great job of mixing in traditional 3D Zelda like direction with the Breath of the Wild open world design. So like you know, because I, I mean when you when you play breath of the wild, you go to the great plateau and you do get your four powers from the, four, because that's kind of like your training area, right? You do the four mm-hmm. kind of towers and you get your powers. And uh, then they kind of don't really direct you in a, in a way, like they kind of direct you towards, you know, eventually going to, to Impa. Right. But like, there's no real direction. And this game kind of gives you the direction right away but allows you to tackle it how you want to or whenever mm-hmm. you want to. And then it just kind of, I went from being super overwhelmed to being like, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly where I'm going. I know what I want to accomplish and I will deviate from these uh, goals as I, as I traverse the land, right? Like I'll go yeah. Yeah. do the shrines over here while I'm on my way to, to Eldon or, or, you know, I I ran into the, some guy who led me to Impa, and this was the conversation we were having on Pal Block, Stephanie. Of like, I found Impa, and or I found this guy who led me to Impa, who led me to the hot air balloon, and you see the designs on the ground, right? And like mm-hmm. that led me to the the tears, right? Or and it's just kind of like, oh well, yeah, this is this is great. This is a great mix of of traditional 3D Zelda mixed with breath of the wild formula and question really... uh, oh go ahead oh no go ahead what question? Uh, on on breath of the wild what which one did you go you guys go to first which temple the uh mm-hmm. water temple the water, water yeah. 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 yeah yeah every it, so yeah that, that was the thing because everyone i know unless they they really are trying not to feels like they went to the water first and, and and breath of the wild does it in a very a kind of subliminal way of mm-hmm. of nudging you there this one it's more overt because everything's like oh well impa is over here oh and the newspaper mm-hmm. it's over in the same area oh and there's um you know and what is the newspaper saying oh there's something going on over in that same area where everyone else is Mm -hmm. so it feels more overt in this one but but they do a masterful masterful job of guiding you without it beating you over the head and in a very closed gated way of of forcing you there no you're right because i remember for breath of the wild it's like the natural progression of going to impas and then near there there was a zora out in the wild so to speak saying Mm -hmm. oh you know and then on the way there or around there there's a gore a traveling goron and then you know that hints to you know so it has this very like you said subliminal and i feel like it's it's a little more different here and i guess Mm -hmm. it's a good thing but maybe for someone who's indecisive like myself i can get overwhelmed not the game yeah yeah. i was overwhelmed too yeah and i actually think simplifying like the weapon stuff like uh not just fusing weapons together but like oh i only need to find arrows and then i can attach things to the arrows to add different effects to them instead of having oh well i need ice arrows specifically uh yeah, I love or, that too. yeah it's so it makes it so much 
I, I think it makes it cl- a cleaner experience in a way because like, oh, I need more, you know, ice choo choos to put on my, <laughs> on my uh, mm-hmm. arrows so I can go to this mm-hmm. snowy area and just kind of collect them. Uh, or, you know, it's it's just it's a really nice, simple change that I think goes a long way. Uh, and I also like experimenting with fusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the mm-hmm. weapons because like yeah you can make the long stick stick which was like the big joke going around the first weekend i think right where you attach a stick to another stick and it just make a long stick but like i've been putting like bombs on the ed- ends of sticks i've been putting uh you know obviously the rock stuff but like you can also attach different types of mushrooms or different plants to the edges and they cause different effects you know, in the in the demo, we saw them attached to like a smoke mushroom that causes a smoke mm-hmm. effect. But like, yeah. but like they're like you can attach like the electric ones to to the sticks, and it causes like electrical fields and stuff. It's kind of cool. Have uh, you guys made a skateboard out of your shield? Yes. Not yet. Fuse I it with a mine cart. I haven't, but I heard it was awesome. And you can you can sketch on the uh, the rails, just like you're playing Tony Hawk. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash bossrushmedia, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Nice. Yep. That's awesome. I like how this game actually explains the weapon degradation this time. Instead of being like, oh, your weapons are garbage. It's no, the gloom pretty much ate all the weapons. And so the best way to make your weapons stronger is by fusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, have you guys actually like grab the monster parts out of your inventory and use those to fuse on your weapons? Yeah. Because yeah. I highly recommend it. That is how you make some strong ass weapons. Yeah, those oh, really. Like- Phoenix mm-hmm. nails and mm-hmm. and horns and stuff will really power up like arrows will like triple mm-hmm. their power and oh wow and of course like the eyeballs will make the tracking arrows um if you put like a tentacle on um a, a, like a sword you create a whip oh that's so cool <gasps> that is yeah. very cool that's yeah cool no one of oh, my favorite be Indiana was... Jones yeah yeah. One of my very first attempts with those was using the blue uh, Lizzo's horns, which kind of looks like a, a katana blade, and mm-hmm. attaching that to uh, a weapon, and all of a sudden it just actually changes the form to make it look like you have a katana. Mm-hmm. So that, that's when I'm like, I totally found a new way to you you know create these weapons, mm-hmm. and I have not stopped fusing weapon monster parts to my weapons since. I like using um, the amiibo to get like a whole bunch of junk weapons, mm-hmm. and then using yeah. those to experiment with with some of the monster parts. So I'm like, okay, well that didn't work, but that was like a a, a shield with like two defense, so mm-hmm. it was no big waste there. But but then I found something really awesome, and then I know to put that on like a Highland shield or something. Have you guys? Oh my goodness! Hold on, one sec. Keep talking. I uh, I've I've been using the amiibos a lot. I've been mm-hmm. I've I found found the full Twilight Princess uh, tunic set, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm wearing that just to make everybody angry because I know nobody likes Twilight Princess. I love uh, Twilight. I don't Princess. like it. I sell the game. You can't upgrade no, I mean, those outfits, right? Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, everything you can find with the amiibo is found in the game. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier to scan an amiibo once a day. Oh, yeah. yeah. So can I say I am very disappointed that I got Epona, but Epona can't pull a cart. Why not? I don't know. I tried it to start the mission with the Great Fairy to upgrade your clothes, and like you have to um, cart these musicians to the person, and it won't with Epona, so I had to go and catch a wild horse. Hmm. Huh. Weird. I haven't, I haven't done that part yet, but I tried to cart something else and i couldn't i did but i had a pona so that must be why i couldn't do it not gonna lie i feel like the cart was 
a stupid idea. Well, I mean, I, I get why they tried to do it, but then when you just realize you glue all your parts together, you really don't need to cart. Like, yeah, I had a mission where I had to get 20 logs and rather than create a cart and have like cart these logs to where they needed to go, I just literally glued them together into a giant log ball and carried them all. Mm -hmm. I don't like the, uh, as much because I'm not as creative, I guess. All of the little, um, the, I can't, the, not, I can't remember his name now, the carpenter guy, the son, oh. whatever, Ugh. like Hudson or. That's the president, president, president Pre Hudson. Yeah. All of those little, the, the little, um, material caches that you find where it's just like, here's some, uh, random pieces of wood and some, so like, I need something else. Yeah. <laughs> And they all have the same thing, and I like. I can't move that <laughs> that well. Yeah, it's uh, the it's funny because I I the, especially when building vehicles and stuff like mm -hmm. I kind of have just entered the experimental stage of like building something more than just adding a fan to the <laughs> to the yeah. Air, most of mine thing. is just fan stuff yeah mm -hmm. yeah i i've tried to experiment with some rockets i haven't gotten the rocket stuff down yet like i just haven't uh mostly because i'm afraid to use them after my korok incident but that's uh <laughs> you know uh that was kind of funny i ended up finding that korok though for those no. who for those who listen to uh pal block i who didn't listen to pal block i the i found a korok and his buddy was on the other side of the river so mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Here, there's a rocket laying here. It's time to experiment with rockets. I attached the Korok to a board, put a rocket on on the on the board, and tried to rocket it over there. And it flipped upside down and went into the river and started flowing down the river. <laughs> and uh, he got he got stuck on a bridge, so it was fine. But I <laughs> I figured. It oh my out. gosh. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. I, I like that when you get to those situations, like you can use your imagination, go absolutely wild with what you want to do. But typically what you find there is just what you need to get the Korok to where they mm -hmm. need to go. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and that's, that's mm -hmm. the thing too, that I like is like, if you don't want to really engage with the building stuff at all, they provide you with the tools to do it mm -hmm. as simply and as efficient as possible. Or you can be one of these giant. You can build a giant mech and walk around the world if you want. Have you seen these things? Did yeah. You, yeah. There, Nintendo Life had a whole article on like all the things that people have built. Somebody built a mech. Someone built an orbital laser shooter. <laughs> There's a website that I have bookmarked. I think that uh, maybe I don't have it bookmarked, but it's someone has has compiled as like create creations that people have done. Oh, that'd um, be nice. Yeah. And like puts a step by step like how to build this and what materials that'd you need. Cool. And it has like that that orbital strike thing and the 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 wicker man with the um the flame throwing um part <laughs> <laughs> the appendage yes. yes um you know that could, everything from like here's a simple cart to you know the most absurd thing that you can think of and it, i haven't used it I, I need to find it and i can send it to you but um but it's interesting I, and i really look forward into like five years what kind of craziness will people have on there yeah, the next by the next time they, they announce the next Zelda game, we'll kn we'll yeah. know yeah. all the crazy things people are building. Um, yeah. So where do we we want to go next? So I do want to talk about the opening of this game. Yeah, let's start. It is let's it rewind. is very. It's it's definitely the opposite of of Breath of the Wild, right? Because obviously Breath of the Wild kind of opens and you run out of the cave and you jump up the wall and the story doesn't really start until like, you know, you're well into your adventure where this is just kind of like man it just kind of kicks off you're you're underground you start where that initial trailer kind of uh starts off uh although that weird elephant animal is not with you but that's uh 
it's another yeah story you're underneath day. the castle hyrule castle with zelda you have all your hearts you have all your stamina right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you're re- re- looking at all this architecture and i think zelda said you know initially they've been told by her father the king like not to explore the depths because of mm-hmm plot reasons yeah but now they are because people are getting afflicted by the gloom yeah yeah (laughs) the the gloom uh which is you actually get gloom like we kind of mentioned it earlier but you get gloom damage from specific uh enemies and places and the weird goop that's on the ground that like you can't refill those hearts once you get that damage which is like kind of kind of cool and kind of crazy at the same time mm-hmm. uh but like as you're walking down you kind of go through and you come into this room where there's a bunch of murals uh and uh stephanie you're kind of like the the zelda aficionado here what is what are these murals <laughs> what are these murals the imprisoning the imprisoning war it's right the imprisoning That's the, yep. war, correct yeah and they, there was a mural of the demon king uh with all of his lackeys and then there was also the image that we saw in one of the trailers, which ended up being a Zonai. Um, and the images depicted that the Zonai allied themselves with the Hylians and kind of cr- like created Hyrule, so to speak. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, it's super, super cool to see the like Zelda just being so into talking about the this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I I love Zelda in this game, like her personality and her kind of just leadership ability and like her kind of charisma in this game. A shout out to uh, Patricia Somerset, the voice actress, because she does a great job of of portraying Zelda. I I love how she gets across how excited Zelda is to find the stuff and kind of, you know, figure this stuff out. And uh, then we kind of go down further and then you see the uh, the the what do you call it the evaporated kind of Ganon body Ganondorf body. We call it the dehydrated Ganon. Whatever, evaporated, dehydrated, whatever. It's all the same. Mama fog. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. oh. then you have rehydrated, and that's Daddy Ganon. Mm. Yeah. But uh, well, I got the voice of dehydrated Ganon. Whatever they did to Matt Mercer's voice, like it was really good. Oh, and side note, um, I had to talk, tell my son goodnight. One quick thing about the mural, I don't know if you mentioned it, but there's one wall that's blocked off by rocks. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm really wondering, I'm sure that will be revealed as some like some big twist later on. Link forgot his bombs. That, I know, that I made know. me up. So like, how is he going to forget his bombs going yeah. down into Yeah, whatever happened to the, the mm-hmm. Sheikah Slate? Uh, with those remote bombs, I mean that would have been perfect. I think the the Same. Sheikah slate um, deactivated, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't. I, I have my theory on on what happened to those on the okay. shrines and the the towers, but Ooh, okay. and the divine beasts and the divine beasts. Yeah, mm-hmm. literally everything from the calamity is like gone. I, I have my thoughts on that, but I've, I've I'm I'm not I'm the I, I've I've not progressed as far as anyone else here so there is a side quest in the um and the nakluda village i forget what that i think it's just called nakluda there's a school there and by you can do a side quest chain that talks about the calamity but i haven't actually gone and done that where is that okay and and that's all the way in the east that's where the um okay the uh, professor was in the breath wild okay 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 I got gotcha. you. Yeah, the laboratory. Uh-huh. Akala yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Um, That's and then, right. Yeah. And then we then we kind of uh, see Zelda fall and Link kind of gets his... Oh. Well, his, his like... Can I bring Ganon this wakes down? Up. Yeah. Because this is going really fast, but I want to like really get into how much of a masterpiece I think this is in the beginning. Yeah, let's Because when they first show up, the hand that's holding Ganondorf, dehydrated Ganondorf down, just falls down. Whether that was prophesized or something, it shocked me because usually, like, 
what's the, what are the odds that the hand that holds Gandorf down just falls down immediately? You think like maybe they'd touch mm-hmm. it by accident or whatever. And then that's where that what looked like a tear, but it is actually a stone we, we can get into later. That Zelda. Megatama. Yes, that Zelda picks up, and that's when Ganondorf kind of re or reanimates and sends all this goop, which is gloom slash malice slash whatever, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it consumes Link's arm and sword. And I thought it was kind of funny because the sword shatters, and a piece of the sword just nicks Ganondorf's cheek, and he's like, seriously. This is the sword that seals the darkness. I think that was a pretty big power move that it just like only just barely gave him a little paper cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was a good that was a good uh good moment. I actually I really like how like Link Link's like like they actually show Link like his arm is like kind of burned and like melting away almost, right? And yeah. He kind of reaches out for for Zelda mm-hmm. and misses, right? And then we kind of wake up, and Link is kind of laying in this tomb where the 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 Zonai arm has kind of been attached to him, right? And that's how we kind of figure out how he gets mm-hmm. this new kind of arm. And Raru is there, and we kind of learn more about Raru and who he is, and what he is which spoilers zonai uh for and later on we kind of figure out who he really is and uh it's just kind of crazy how they just attach this arm to link because his arm was beyond saving so like what happens what happens in the like i still i again none of us have beaten the game yet but like i still think this this whole thing is like a trilogy. Like, so Link's going to have the Zonai arm in the next game too. But like, if he doesn't, is he just going to be like, uh, like, I don't know. What are they going to do with that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, is it safe I, to I, say that we're spoiling this at a hundred percent? Yeah. So this is a hundred percent a spoiler cast. Can I just go back to Ganondorf one more time mm. before we, yeah. Uh, I really like, what I liked about that scene was it established just how freaking powerful he was being at his lowest peak and completely decimating the master sword and Link's arm when Link is at full power. Yeah. And it's like, if that's what he can do when he's just waking up, what the hell is he going to do when he gets his full power? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Continue. So let's, let's, <laughs> We kind of walk out into the Sky Islands for the first time. Mm-hmm. And all the Zonai technology is kind of either fighting you or giving you things. Right. So this is where, like, first spoiler. So Raru it was the former first king of Hyrule, which shocked me. I'm like, oh, the first king of Hyrule was a Zonai. That's rewriting history. We won't acknowledge mm-hmm. the uh, timeline at all. And uh, mm-hmm. But yes, the constructs, which kind of was my guess with when another trailer you saw the construct also fighting a chew jelly chew thingamajig. So there's mm-hmm. the regular soldier constructs. So they have been programmed just to attack any threat. Like any threat. Doesn't discriminate. So it'll attack Bokoblins, ju- chews, and your and yourself, and then there's steward constructs. Um, there's also forge constructs, like other types of constructs, but those are benign. Those are the ones that mm-hmm. basically are there to give you the written tutorial when you talk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're adorable though, because when you practice swinging your sword or doing something, they kind of cower and say that they're in danger. So yes. The, the Great Sky Island is populated with lots of constructs, whether it's soldier or steward, and um, you go towards what they call the Temple of Time. What? Yeah. You mean the one that was down on the Great Plateau was not the actual Temple of Time? This one had a glow up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like an upside down pyramid. It looks cool. It looks cool. Um, yeah. I was kind of wondering, like, how does this like does every kind of civilization have their own temple of time or does like you know like is this the real temple of time and like the temple on on in the hyrule 
kind of land kind of like a you know kind of like how <laughs> kind of how like the vatican is like the the main catholic kind of whatever but then like there's a ton of catholic churches surround you know what i mean like is that kind of what we're a situation we're looking at here uh, i wonder and, and this goes into another spoiler of of where zelda is um that when she falls and she disappears she goes all the way back to the the formation of hyrule and is with raru and and all of that and you at least see snippets as as i've played that she is um instrumental in helping that formation of where what they're doing in, in Hyrule. I mean, Hyrule's been established, but she has the, she, like, she knows of the Temple of Time from Breath of the Wild and, and all, all of that. timey that. timey-wimey mm-hmm. stuff. That we'll yeah, and so, and again, without me having beaten the game and everything, I, I wonder how much of the constructs and the Temple of Time and stuff isn't Zelda saying, we need to build a temple here let's call it the temple of time we need to have these constructs here and this is what they're going to do because the the first the 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 first hint that that's where she's gone it's right there at the beginning where she has the the pura pad and one of the first constructs comes and is like oh there there you are link zelda told me to give you this and i've been holding on to this for a very long time and he has the pad that she had um and and so you know i just wonder how much of this is timey wimey kind of stuff and not not yeah Yeah. you're you're diving into some interesting things and i'm not going to spoil what's going on with that just yet but just just note you're 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 thinking in a good direction here Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i have with how far i am i've had some theories about the way that time is working in this game and like how uh i just i think there's going to be some cool things happening in that respect just based on some of the the memories i've found and how far i'm i am through the game but uh it's the the sky that main sky island is definitely you know kind of harkening back to our previous conversation about the sky stuff kind of being underwhelming that that main sky island is kind of like the best one so far it definitely feels yeah. like that's the most fleshed out or you know thought you know they really thought this through was the other ones just kind of feel like they kind of just feel like extensions of the regions that they're in like mm-hmm. okay okay mm-hmm. i found the tower so i'm going to go all the way up and Oh, there's some the, sky the archipelagos of each. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What I what I liked about that starting one is kind of like the Great Plateau mm-hmm. is that there there are almost like biomes in it. And that each one, like you go from like here to you're in a mine to you're up in a snowy area. Here's some water, and you know, and that feels like a island. Mm-hmm. Um, so to speak, uh, what you would find in in many other games exploring, and then the others are just like here's here's a little thing, and right. it, 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 you finish it pretty quickly, and and then you just hop on over to the next one. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Great Plateau because there's just generally speaking a lot of similarities with this entire intro section from waking up from a grave near death injury, like the Shrine of Resurrection mm-hmm. and the Womb mm-hmm. of Awakening. Mm-hmm to this great sky island which is like the great plateau where there's a snowy icy area blah 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 but last but not least there are shrines here not the same shika shrines but zonai shrines and there's four three three four no there's four, three three there's uh, four. Four there's total. a fourth one yeah, yeah fourth at the end and you get defeat or uh, complete all four to get your new tears of the kingdom abilities which um in in that area is fuse ascend rewind and ultra hand 
So I know that's a lot, but I guess, what do you guys think of the shrines? I, I don't know if you want to just talk about these ones on the Great Sky Islander shrines in general, but I will say I do like these better than Breath of the Wild shrines. Agreed. Drop something, sorry. <laughs> these shrines are, for me, a lot more easier to understand and don't rely entirely with luck and, like, mixing in, like, all these different powers together to try and get, like, whatever you need to achieve. Like, a lot of them involve constructing stuff and using your Ultra Hand abilities to get to one point to the other. And I feel like it's simpler, and when you solve these puzzles, it still gives you that, satisfac that satisfaction that you did something cool. Yeah. My, my, my favorite thing is I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> of mm -hmm. Moving my whole switch around to... to move something yeah god I, I just you recently like, you didn't like doing that with the giant ball and kind of having to like turn it upside down and kind of no. do one of these things and nintendo stop <laughs> throwing gyroscope stop making gyroscope and I, I can understand it um so I, re I recently replayed breath of the wild in anticipation of this and you know and i was thinking back on that and i can understand with the, with the wii u um, having that because I, I can look at the screen if I'm playing it that way. I can look at the screen and I can move the controller and I can see what I'm doing. But in handheld mode, I can't see a damn thing when I'm like turning the switch upside down backwards. <laughs> and and that that was just like. There was more than once I went, you know what, I've beaten this game before. I'm going to look up the cheap method of, of getting this damn ball. <laughs> like, I'm, uh, I'm I'm bald enough. I don't need to lose more hair trying to, to complete this puzzle. I will say this. I'm actually want probably the most amenable to motion controls and gyroscope. I actually don't mind it at all. I'm one of the people that I, really don't, but... Usually, I, I, yeah, yeah, the, you, especially aiming with a bow that when I did that with wind waker HD on the Wii U, that was magical. Mm -hmm. That was worth buying a Wii U just to <laughs> do that. That was just like, this feels so great. It was that great mixture. Um, and I think this is what the switch and Wii U, um, have done really well as opposed to the Wii is that, that, good mix of traditional controls with just enough motion. You get it with Splatoon as well. Mm. That that just enough that really elevates um, the experience. Um, but just doing that in those temples in Breath of the Wild, that was just so frustrating to me. I get it. I, yeah, I, I don't know how to put it in words why I like these shrines better, because I know mm -hmm. some of the traditional shrines in Breath of the Wild were physics-based, but I don't know, I feel like all of these are very physics-based. physics, physics based. Um, They yeah. are simple, but streamlined. Mm -hmm. I think they're easier, but more fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There's almost yeah. like a progression with them too. Like the first room kind of teaches you the mechanic of what your goal is in that shrine. Yeah. And then it, the next one just tweaks it up a little more. And finally you get to like a third puzzle, which is like mm -hmm. the culmination of everything that you attempted in that shrine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, it, it, I think of it like the, the Mario progression of that first Mario stage being like the, that first jump. You know, there's no pitfall. You're fine. You learn how to jump. The second one, there's a little danger, and then the third, you know, is is even more difficult. It's... Yeah, I I almost feel like I almost feel like that they so before when Breath of the Wild came out, like Zelda hadn't really sold. Like, I mean, it sold well, but not like Mario numbers, right? This and when Breath of the Wild, some of those shrines were kind of just like obtuse just for the sake of being obtuse and mm -hmm. it's like i wonder if they changed the design how their design philosophy was for these shrines because they expected this game to sell more mm. because you know and, and it's the same reason why stuff like you know god of war every five steps like somebody tells you oh did you see that over there 
you yeah. know and like yeah. and, and i wonder if this is like nintendo's way of like hey we know a lot of you might be new to the zelda franchise this might be your first zelda or maybe you bought breath of the wild in anticipation for this and you don't play a lot of games here's like you said the mario progression of like here's the mechanic here's a medium like whatever for this mechanic and then mm-hmm. here's like the you know the ultimate version of this mechanic and you got to figure it out early in this in the switch's life you know I, I noticed that like you know breath of the wild was really changing that zelda formula and going one direction and then mario odyssey did the same thing it felt almost like the mario breath of the wild in a way because it just changed how things were it was a much more open world it was much more exploration and um experimentation and and but you get a lot of that little progression type of stuff in mario odyssey and i think with with tears of the kingdom you you might have you know odyssey's team learning from breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom learning from odyssey and you have a lot of this you know internal learning from each other yeah i mean don't forget monolith either monolith yeah. did a monolith. lot of the design work on the at least the filling out the world and making it feel like it's mm-hmm. fully realized and lived in which that's another thing about this world too that we haven't really discussed is like this fe- this world feels more alive than it did in breath of the wild for some yeah. reason like it feels yeah. like there's a lot more smaller encampments of people there you know the towns are busier like it just feels more lived in and more uh engaging well it shows progression right because in breath of the wild the calamity happened so all of civilization kind of broke down we're in tears of the kingdom once you leave the great sky island and you know drop down onto land you know society's starting to come back together you know they're you can see the little camp hyrule um crested uh tents right outside of the castle like they're finally starting to rebuild their the civilization yeah yeah and uh i i really like how um it kind of shows that they're kind of gearing up for some sort of (laughs) fight some sort of war against against the demon king right like it seems like uh i don't know it just seems like there's a lot of pockets it almost reminds me of the way like they've been portraying star wars in a way where like there's these Mm -hmm. little rebel pockets uh but obviously like the demon king hasn't taken over really yet i mean things are starting to happen but uh it it really seems like they're preparing for the worst and uh i i like that and like look out uh what is it look out landing landing mm-hmm. yeah uh i kept saying look out point i know i and, kept saying some that. of those posts and yeah i kept saying that too and i was like that's not right but i don't remember that's last fallout saying. 3 mm-hmm. <laughs> another uh, post-apocalyptic <laughs> thing yeah right uh i really i really like how like there's this central hub of of a place to go now too right where yeah in breath of the wild you had a couple places you could go but this really feels like this is where this is your hub this is where you go to kind of like do things for for uh uh just the different characters and kind of come back here to buy things and upgrade things and castle town yeah, yeah for... exactly castle t- yeah uh so so even in in approximately the, the same area a little a little south but yeah close enough close close enough close enough so we are going we only have about 20 ish minutes left of the in time uh but i kind of want to talk about some of the early characters that we've met obviously uh you know we've we've met uh raru and uh uh should we talk about sonia do we do do we need to talk about sonia which is she doesn't like... appear until one of the 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 high the geoglyphs right so yeah mm-hmm. yeah that f- yeah, yeah kind of like that first one i guess when you meet impa so i mean i guess we could probably talk about her a little bit um i don't want to get she has a lot of hair yeah <laughs> yeah so does raru <laughs> yeah hairy people uh I don't want to get into any of the uh, we've kind of hinted at the companions. I don't want to really talk about them because they're kind of tied to the dungeons. Uh, but <laughs> the Internet is thirsting over Pura. 
again. Oh, uh, yeah, Pura, so. who by a freak scientific experiment turned herself into a child in Breath of the Wild, but now she's a, a I don't want to call her a teenager because that also sounds inappropriate. Probably about 20. Yeah, there we go. I like guess. a 20-year-old smoking hot, I guess, person. I don't know. Yeah. Sexy librarian. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. We'll go we'll we'll say that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh but anyways, the internet is just like all over this and it's kind of like all right guys, you guys need to like I don't know. What the, do, but you know what? Let the internet have their time. If the ladies want to, you know, be hot over Daddy Dorf, then you know, let the guys have their pura. That's their, fair. You know, just 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 barely legal <laughs> just barely. uh sexy librarian. Uh, I've just learned that that it's that rule, what, 36, uh, the internet will thirst over anything Mm, and everything. Mm -hmm. Because when Breath of the Wild came out, Uh, the things that I saw of of the um, uh, 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 Tetsu, or or Tetsu? Hetsu, Hetsu, yeah. Mm. And I was like, Wow! Why, why, is, why is this a thing, the internet? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, people were shipping Sidon and Link, and there were yeah. some illustrations that were floating around the internet yeah, that I didn't want to see. Don't look at anything on the internet. Don't, don't put in anything. Just don't even look. And then when don't Age image of, search. Age of Calamity came out, and they had Young Impa in there, and everybody was, like, all over that, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pura was also kind of a teenager in that one as well, if I remember. Yeah, I went back and I looked because I was like, is that the same? I don't remember her looking like that in Age of Calamity. So I looked back and it's it, no, it, completely different design. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we see, we find Pira, Robbie, and, and, and Joshua kind of at uh, Lookout Landing. And, uh, you know, they kind of walk you through some of the those Zonite stuff that you find in the sky islands which will be proved to be a very valuable resource it seems when you're uh <laughs> trying to upgrade things um, well and, and then... actually that's important to to point out so even though you as link have gone through all that stuff i mean down on I almost said down on earth in hyrule you know they've only just witnessed hyrule castle being lifted up from the ground with all this gloom and they've coined it upheaval so there's this upheaval event where the castle rose from the ground a ton of caves became accessible and like a lot of holes (laughs) holes um, holes you know gloom filled holes (laughs) Um, so yeah um sad holes that kind of goes back to what i was talking about before and I, i hope this doesn't get too off track but those gloom filled holes a lot of them are in places where shrines were in Breath of the Wild. Ah. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where I think the shrines went was that they collapsed and went because they had to come from somewhere, mm. and they went back down into the the underground and that's a good now point. you have these big holes. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a good kind of. I didn't really realize that until you said that. That's kind of a. It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. But but yeah, and then, the Hylians, they don't really know. I don't think they've necessarily made the connection 100% with what's going on with the Zonai, right? They're just having a lot of researchers out there that are trying to connect Zonai to this. But I obviously I don't think any of them are very privy to what Link already knows. But <laughs> like you said, Corey Pira and the, her two folks, they're kind of like heading up this investigation because Link and Zelda vanished while they're exploring in the castle the day of the upheaval. Mm-hmm. Imagine reading a book or a story, some fan fiction of all of this from the perspective of just a normal Hylian. Like, what the hell is going on it's here? Like, that's it, we're moving. That's fake news. Zonai, fake news. Mm-hmm. Ter- I hear this Termina place is pretty... Uh pretty cool <laughs> real real hipster place yeah i hear the Coming moon's real angry but you know it's fine the moon's yeah. always angry in zelda what the hell yeah blood moon the termina moon you know every time the blood moon starts coming i get anxious mm-hmm. 
I it's know. like I know what's gonna happen, but it's still like you see the red moon, you you hear the music start creeping up, you see the mist rise yeah. from the ground, and it's like, no, no, stop it, stop it now. It reminds me of Sonic drowning, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know what? very similar. Da, 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 Right. And then it's all, the blood moon rises. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just skipped that cutscene just because I'm not comfortable anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just always skip it too. Uh, are there are there any other characters we want to we want to touch on? Uh, well, do we want to get our thoughts on Sonia since you did mention her? So yeah, yeah. I mean, I've only seen her in a cutscene or two, right? I don't have a lot of opinions, but but we at least know who she was because she was in the final mm-hmm. trailer and we're like oh my gosh is this zelda reincarnated as hylia or is this hylia like a lot of yeah. us were theorizing if it was highly it's like no she is a hylian uh mm-hmm. a hylian that was married to um Raru. Gets freaky with a drag goat dragon i know yeah. imagine what that's like um and then you're like wait a minute Zelda's part goat dragon <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure she's gotta be like no, <laughs> I'm they, not have, really... they have to also uh, somehow touch on the other Raru in the Zelda franchise. Yeah, the um the Sage and uh, the Sage of Light was he? Yeah. Yep. And and Ocarina. Well, <laughs> I mean, and Kapora Gabor. I don't. I I mean, I don't want to. <sighs> Man, I don't want to spoil anything, but they at they some don't. point they they touch on that subject. Okay. Uh, Good. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how they do, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think I think that uh, that this kind of lineage thing. I wonder how I wonder how this is gonna affect Zelda moving forward, like as a person, I guess, and as a kind of trying to you know, I mean the whole first game she was just trying to figure out how, who she was how to be a leader right and I got mm-hmm. now we kind of are in a place where she's kind of lost in in <laughs> in time I guess and you're just kind of like okay well now she's trying to figure out how to get back and how Link's involved and now I'm just I'm just curious how this story is going to unfold Oh, you have yet to see it. I know. I want. Mm. All right. Sorry, but that that was all. I just wanted to at least acknowledge Sonya. Yeah. Like I'm. Lo- I mean, mm-hmm. this isn't like spoiling, but not spoiling because I'm just gonna go by the pictures in the beginning of the game and the trailer. You know, Ganondorf became the Demon King in the picture because he took a stone from this floating chick with ears. So I'm like, he probably killed Sonya. So I don't know. Like, I'm just guessing just by looking at the picture, not any of the Mm -hmm. geoglyphs yet. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. But like between the, that, you know, the, the discoveries in the beginning of the game through slowly getting these quote unquote memories, they did memories again, but just in a different way. You know, I am curious to find out more about Raru and Sonya's uh, legacy. Mm-hmm. And, and also how this ties in, I think, with the events from 10,000 years before Breath of the Wild starts. Because that never was cleared up either mm-hmm. on who that original hero was that kind of looks like may, maybe Ganondorf with the red long hair mm-hmm. and, and I- Zelda... I don't know if you're going to get that answer because to be honest, like I know one of the things we want to talk about, maybe some negative impressions about this game. Mm. My mm. negative impression in this game is that there's almost no tie into the calamity. Like you would think, Oh, calamity Ganon and Ganondorf are, are the same thing. No one has made that connection in the yeah. game. Uh, it's almost yeah, like I've, they I've were two completely that. things different things i'm glad you mentioned Mm -hmm. that because pat i think you're the farthest along all four of us and i was going to ask and maybe we could transition to that as far as like any negative impressions i am not sure and it seems like you're confirming that there really isn't much tie-ins to calamity and i feel like that's important especially since it's like officially the official sequel to breath of the wild like describing what malice is why is malice different from gloom because it looks the same to me mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so like oh that you yeah. know 
And Breath of the Wild left so many unanswered questions mm -hmm. because we still get videos daily of people talking about the lore of Breath of the Wild and like, why is this like this? And here's something else I didn't know. And, you know, where does it fit in this timeline and how does it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're getting it, it's getting even more muddled here with the Zonai and the formation of Hyrule and that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, the Calamity was originally supposed to be, you know, a evil madman who decided to just forego his physical body and just become pure malice. Mm -hmm. You know, that all of a sudden now, like, we have a body and this, it's not actually connected. Like, there's no, no one puts their mind be like Ganon, Ganondorf, Ganon, Ganon. Oh my gosh, it's the same person. No one has, that has not clicked in anyone's opinion. Not have even they, Zelda. Have they have they called him Ganondorf? In, yeah, they they called okay. him Ganondorf in memory, so she does okay. know his name. Okay, but it's I like, couldn't recall if I had heard it or not. Yeah, it it's there's just like no like connection to the one thousand you know, the ten thousand year war. Yeah, or like Ganon seems Ganondorf seems to be even before that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the imprisoning war and the ten thousand year war are two different wars. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what exactly was the calamity? Yeah. And why did it share the same name? Yeah. 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 When I was replaying Breath of the Wild, you know, and because it was only the first time um, since it came out that I was replaying the whole thing. Um, and I was like, Has, was it really 10,000 years? Because that really stuck out to me. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to surmise or, or assume that there's 10,000 years of like we don't know anything that's happened in, in that time span because it doesn't seem to connect with any other game because we don't get the imprisoned war we you know we don't get the the guardians or anything like that mm -hmm. um, in any of the other games so there's that 10,000 year span which is all almost all of human history in real in the real world I'm going to have a hot take. I don't think the timeline actually is real. Probably <laughs> the, the not. thing that Nintendo created, I think that's just bullshit. In my I opinion, think... <laughs> Legend of Zelda was something that, like, it's it's the same kind of story with the same kind of characters, just being told by a different perspective each time. So everyone mm -hmm. has their own little twist to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, like, because this was established in Breath of the Wild, almost every single landmark is named after a person, place, or thing in previous games. And in mm -hmm. a memory, it was referenced. So, like, perhaps Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is, like, maybe the the new and kind of only chapter of Zelda, uh, the Zelda, whatever. And then everything else really is a legend. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that leads to the imprisoning war because I was pulling my hair out because the imprisoning war in the Hyrule Historia timeline is this thing that happened in the defeated hero timeline right before a link to the past or something. I'm like, how is that possible? So that means Ganondorf beat Link in Ocarina of Time and then this, but there's no zone I there. And then I realized after I got into this rabbit hole, I'm like, none of this matters. Timeline is yeah, real. It, it really doesn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they're all just I think they, they, stories. Go they, ahead. They purposefully just pick these little elements from that timeline, knowing, like, oh, they're going to be talking about this for another 10 years. So let's... Let, let's confuse let's, the shit out of them. Either it's really <laughs> smart on their, on their part or really just, like, they don't care. Because, like, this is going to keep people talking. I mean, we've been talking about Breath of the Wild until this game came out right yeah. like every like still people are talking about breath of the wild right and, mm -hmm. uh, and things that you don't know yeah. yeah and it's like oh my god i think about breath of the wild at least once a week since i stopped playing it like uh, i thought about going back and playing it before this game and i'm at what little i did play i am glad i didn't do a full playthrough because i would have just been like the controls and the the powers and everything would have just like i would have just hated myself but uh yeah, I think I think Nintendo just like they either know what they're doing and they're just being really cheeky and smart about it or they just don't care. Right. This is just another Zelda game that, you know, ties into the last one. Uh, and that's kind of it. it's just a sandbox now, a big giant puzzle sandbox, and they don't really care about their lore or their history, which 
Like, I kind of wish they took more action and kind of like organizing all this and making it like a real thing, which I guess Hyrule Historia kind of did that, but like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom kind of blew all that up, like we kind of already mm-hmm. said. And it's kind of like, well, it's a multiverse. A... <laughs> Everything is yeah. a multiverse now. Yeah. Every game, movie, TV show, it's a multiverse. Yeah. So that means Hyrule Warriors was canon. Oh my gosh! They, the original they Hyrule already, Warriors. Did they kind of already confirm that? Like Hyrule <laughs> Warriors is canon, and then Age of Calamity is a direct sequel to Hyrule Warriors. Like it's so stupid. That villain from Hyrule Warriors too. Mm. Mm. That's my thirst. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just that was too much. Uh, I remember when I got that, and I my mom came in. Uh, that was the one. It's always that one time <laughs> that you get that one weird scene, and she hadn't seen me play a single lick of it. And you know, I'm like ten some hours into it. You got to fight her that one time, or that first time, and she's all just. You know, and well, what are you playing? <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> always the inopportune moment, right? Always. I mean, I did that mm-hmm. when I was playing when I was playing Bayonetta two when it came to Switch, and I was like, I was like playing the opening thing, and then my, my wife walks in, and she's like, "What are you playing?" I'm like, "It's not what it looks like." <laughs> I mean, it kind of is what it like, looks I can like. Explain. It looks like. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I can explain. Thanks, Bayonetta. It's it, the whole game. Is... Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, all right. So we kind of already said that what next next uh, edition of book club will focus on the dungeons of Tears of the Kingdom, but I kind of want to get your spoiler free thoughts on the dungeon slash dungeons you have completed. Uh, I did the Elden dungeon first, and now I'm in the Wind Temple now, uh, and I <laughs> I am so happy that like. It's not traditional dungeons. It does kind of feel like an extension of the Divine Beast, but they're Thank you. way... Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are... I feel like they are way better crafted than the Divine Beasts. Uh, I feel like... It, 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 I just I just feel like there's a lot more to them. Uh, granted, it's still one giant puzzle that you're kind of solving, and it doesn't really feel like a traditional Zelda dungeon, which is like, okay, whatever. But I, I love... The fact that they did something different enough to them to make me turn my turn around on them because I, for me, breath in Breath of the Wild, the Divine Beasts were like the worst part of the entire game, and so uh, I I love the. So I did I did the Elden Temple first, and I really liked the design of the temple. I loved the ideas of the puzzles, and I really liked the the boss fight. Mm, yes, end. was so fun i was like oh my gosh this is awesome this reminds me of like ocarina of time where i'm like you actually have to utilize like the thing (laughs) to fight the boss yeah yeah. and like it made me feel like back in like when i was in the death mountain fire temple where i was like throwing bombs in the dodongo's mouth like this kind of had that energy to it and i was like oh this is so this is just this is everything that i wanted from the last game and we're finally getting it. Uh, so yeah, I, and I, I really like the, what I've done of the wind temple too. Uh, I kind of feel dumber in the wind temple than I did in the fire temple, but uh, mm. what do you, what are you guys' spoiler free thoughts on the, on the dungeon so far? So I've done three out of the four. Well, if we're talking about the four phenomena, cause I don't know if yeah. anything beyond that I've done yeah. three out of the four. I happen to finish the water temple today. I didn't think I was going to, so I like the Wind Temple the least, but we'll get into that later. Um, the one at Elden, the Fire Temple, is my favorite temple. That was so flippin' fun. The boss is fun. It, it just is fantastic. And the Water Temple is my favorite water temple of all the water temples. Um, Pat, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> um, Great of time is so much fun. No. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, at first I was really turned off by the fact that it's very much like a divine beast because you have to, like, activate or do four things to do the big thing. But what saved it and turned it around, especially when I got to the, the second and third temple, is they have their own theme, which is what the divine beasts lack. Like, the theme mm-hmm. of the fire temple was so 
oh, chef's kiss. Oh, I love so it. So cool. Um, so the fact they had their own theme and the boss battle. So far, for the most part, a lot of the bosses or some most of the enemies are like nods to older bosses or mm-hmm. enemies. Which also, like, that's all we, that's all at least I needed. I don't know about other Zelda fans. I just needed a little taste of what the old Zelda formula was like. And it was just enough. So I am psyched to, to dive into these temples in the next episode. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I've only done the Wind Temple, and I only got through that this morning um, because I'm gallivanting all of doing other stuff. Um, and I kind of went back and forth on I was thinking about it in preparation for this. And, and at first I was a little underwhelmed with the temple itself. Um, but I really liked, I did like the, the build up to things, you know, you, you, it's without really going into it, you, you see what's causing the event mm-hmm. almost from the minute you get into Hyrule and you get there and you're, you're, you're climbing to it. Mm-hmm. I'll just say, you know, you're going to it, you're building to it. And that feels like a part of the temple itself. Um, or these different layers going to the to the a lot temple. Of tension and you get building. The, yeah, it's a lot of tension, and it, and it's walk. It is giving you a new ability of sorts um, that you're using to get there, which is again what what you really want in in the from the old Zelda games, and utilizing that to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I really liked that. It did give me a little bit more of appreciation for some elements of Breath of the Wild in that I did unexpe- unexpectedly miss the um, how the Divine Beasts they all had, like something you activate that changes the temple and you interact with it. And I really, I was like, you know, I, I did like that. That was creative. I don't know if that was that was done well enough because again, that was one of my least favorite parts of the game. But but I did kind of was thinking about that while playing Tears of the Kingdom, and I was like, oh, I kind of missed that. I think um, uh, just to jump in on that point real quick, I think I think when you go do the Fire Temple, you'll find that appreciation. Okay, great, great. Um, you, I didn't get that much in, in the Wind Temple, mm-hmm. um, but I was thinking about it, and it's they're kind of like at least with the Wind Temple, you have this one area that you're doing all of this stuff in, and, and it kind of reminded me of Captain Toad and those puzzle box thing, the the dioramas that mm-hmm. um, uh, that inspired that. And that you're looking at it, and it's just one thing, and you're kind of manipulating it and looking around, and and, and seeing everything. Um, I like that part, um, and the and the boss fight as well was really well done. Mm. It feels like a classic Zelda type of thing. You don't get that in um, uh, Breath of the Wild. It didn't feel like a classic Zelda fight. None mm. of those did. So, yeah. What about you, Pat? Well, I will definitely agree with Black. Uh, the dungeons themselves, or the temples themselves, are very small. But if you consider the overall path to getting to the temple as part of the temple itself, then yeah, it's uh, you know there's a lot of different features that are going on uh, for oh my them. Gosh. Getting to the Wind Temple I was like, oh my gosh, this is so mm-hmm. long. <laughs> Let's just say if you have a fear of heights, you are not going to like getting to the Wind Temple. Oh um, but um, I would say uh, overall, I am enjoying the temples. I do like they do have a slight bit more familiarity with the Zelda formula, even though they do feel like glorified divine beasts. Um but since you guys, none of you guys have hit the Lightning Temple yet, I will say that one felt the most traditional mm. out of all the temples. Huh. Like, lots of rooms interconnected to each other, following a path to, you know, where you're trying to get to. But um, it also had my least favorite boss out mm. of all of them, because that piece of shit would kill you in two hits. Oh, okay. And it was annoying as hell. 
I might have did that one too early, but we'll talk about that later. Ooh, I can't yeah. wait. I know. Well, I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. to. I'm excited. I part of me wants to like streamline the dungeons and, ju- but like also part of me was like, I need to go finish the up the fairy upgrade quest to, so I don't die in like uh, two hits or whatever. I really up, need to do fairy upgrade too. quest is definitely one I would say and get back. Don't pass. <laughs> yeah, get back. Do it. <laughs> uh so that that's we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop it there uh next time we'll hit on all the the temples and uh if there's anything beyond the temples we will hit on that as well uh because i feel like there's something that uh, is going to uh i feel like there's more Mm. so we're gonna we're definitely gonna hit on the four phenomena and then whatever else happens after that uh stephanie pat Block, thank you for your time tonight. Oh, thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Block, you're you are our esteemed guest on this run of book club. Where can we find you? Uh, mostly on on Twitter these days. Uh, um, I haven't jumped ship yet. Um, my Twitter handle is Blocks Game R V W S because it doesn't all fit. Uh, so Blocks Game Reviews, RVWS, and on YouTube, Blocks Gaming Reviews, um, where I do reviews for whatever game uh, interests me the most at that time. Everything from horror to Romancevania. some kids game. Romancevania is my latest oh, one. I'm doing Potion Permit right now. Um, getting that, you know, cozy simulation farming like game and then my final fantasy anthology series i'm hoping to get more episodes of that up soon nice nice Mm. uh remember you can uh you can find this uh on patreon at the at the last uh friday of every month uh if you want to watch on youtube you can find it two weeks later over there on youtube.com slash boss rush network check out all of our content on boss where we are all present in some form or fashion join the discord follow us on social media at boss rush network i want to thank everybody for watching and are listening and we will be back next month with another video game book club for tears of the kingdom goodbye everybody yeah you found me Do-do-do-do. The Boss Rush Podcast is a product of Boss Rush Media, LLC, and is recorded from our headquarters in Akron, Ohio. This show is produced, written, and directed by me, Corey Deering. My co-hosts are Stephanie Klimov, Laurent Dawkins, and Edward Varnell. You can find Stephanie at Klimov underscore author on Twitter and Instagram, as well as on the EXP cast. You can find Laurent at Exodus803 on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube, and also on Crossroads, the video game podcast. You can find Edward at that retro code on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting Nintendo Power. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Corey in HD, and find me hosting Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast, and co-hosting Nintendo Power. Find the Boss Rush Podcast on all social media platforms at Boss Rush Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network Discord and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.